after struggling these last couple of weeks, last week I went 12 and 2 in my picks. The unpredictability of the NFL continues, as every single favorite won outright last week. Not everyone covered, however, but every single favorite won outright. And it was anticipated by Chris Sinclair, who is active in my comment section. He is commenting just about every single week, if not every single week. And he mentioned that this was going to be the week that Vegas, they took it on the chin. They took the loss like a man. What does week seven have in store for us? Do I think every single favorite will win again this week? Probably not. I don't know if it's ever happened before every favorite won outright. Or if it has happened, when was the last time it happened? Because last week it felt pretty historic. Johnny Sports Network, here to provide you with my week seven NFL predictions. And let's get right into the week seven predictions. As always, we begin with Thursday night football. And this week we have the Broncos and Saints. Sean Payton makes his return to New Orleans. As the Broncos will be taking on a Saints team that is going to be shorthanded in this game. As the Saints, they are dealing with a lot of injuries right now. And it's looking like the Broncos will be without Patrick Sertain in this matchup. However, the Broncos, they did rally a little bit against the Chargers last week, being down 23 to nothing, but they scored 16 points in the fourth quarter, and I do think that is a difference in this game for me. I do think the Broncos, they did pick up some positives from that matchup, and it carries over to this Thursday night. I do think it is in the Saints' best interest to have Alvin Kamara handle a heavy workload in the Saints backfield, to have Alvin Kamara really carry the Saints in this matchup. But I am going to pick the Broncos to win this game in a game that I do feel like is a very tough one to call because of the major injuries on both sides for this matchup. But I will pick the Broncos in this game, I do think that the Broncos, they do have a little bit more momentum going into this matchup than the Saints do, as the Saints are on a four-game losing streak since starting the season 2-0. Once again, we have a game in London this week. Patriots and Jaguars. Drake May made his first NFL start last week against the Texans. He threw two interceptions and also three touchdown passes. And I talked about last week how it would have been smarter for the Patriots to start Drake May when they played the Dolphins the week prior. That way Drake May would have had some confidence going into that game. Because if Drake May starts in that game against the Dolphins, I think the Patriots would have won that game. And now... The Patriots and Jaguars, they both sit at 1-5 and five on the season. And Jaguars coach Doug Peterson, he talked about how he thinks there needs to be a culture change in Jacksonville. Does he have any idea that he is the one that is in control of that culture? I do think if the Jaguars don't win this game, I do think they will part ways with Doug Peterson. Tuesday morning. I am picking the Jaguars to win this game because I just don't think that Drake May is quite there yet as a confident quarterback right now. But I think after these next couple of games, we are going to see Drake May's confidence improve. But I am picking the Jaguars to win what is definitely a must-win game. And if the Jaguars lose this game, Expect Doug Peterson to be let go by the Jaguars on Tuesday. Seahawks and Falcons. 
the Seahawks are desperate to get back into the win column as they have lost now three in a row since starting the season 3-0. and And they go on the road to take on the Falcons. The Falcons on a three-game winning streak. The offense has been getting better in those last three games. However, the defense, there are some concerns. They're giving up more points than you want them to give up. And they did play down to the Panthers' level throughout the first three quarters of the game last week, but they pulled away in the fourth quarter. I'm going to go on the record right now and say this will be the highest scoring game of the week this week. I will be surprised if the under is what takes place in this game. I anticipate this game is going to go back and forth because... These are two defenses that you don't know which defense is going to show up. I anticipate that in a high-scoring game, for those of you that are regulars to this channel, you know I do favor the teams who played on Thursday night the week prior because they have the advantage of extra rest. I think the Seahawks... They get back in the win column, and they end the Falcons' three-game winning streak in a high-scoring game, the highest-scoring game of the week. I think this game goes into the high 30s. Up next, we have the Titans and the Bills. For the Titans, it's the same story all season long. Their defense keeps them in it. They do enough to put the Titans in a position to win, but the offense can't score enough points. While the Bills, they got a much-needed win on Monday Night Football against the Jets. And I do want to acknowledge, the Bills, they did trade for Amari Cooper today. So Josh Allen is getting some more help trading for Amari Cooper. It was anticipated the Bills would trade for a wide receiver, the question was going to be which one. And now the Bills, they acquire Amari Cooper. They have momentum from the win from last week. And this pick, I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory. I am picking the Bills. I think for the Titans, it's going to be, once again, the same story, different week. I think their defense keeps them in it. But the offense, they can't produce enough points. I am going with the Bills. Bengals and Browns. The Browns fell to 1-5 and five last week, and they are still sticking with Deshaun Watson as their quarterback, even though almost everyone knows that it's in the Browns' best interest to start Jameis Winston to try to inspire this Browns team. While the Bengals, they got a much-needed win over the Giants on Sunday Night Football last week, where I did feel like it was a must-win for the Bengals. I felt like their back was against the wall going into this game. They could not afford to fall to 1-5, and five, even though we have seen teams in the past start the year off 1-5. But still rally make the playoffs. But the Bengals, they need to do everything they could to avoid that situation. And now they go on the road to take on the Browns. And there are reports that Nick Chubb will play in this game. That he will return to the Browns lineup this week. And I don't like that I have to predict this game. This particular moment. Because while we know what the Browns have looked like this season with Deshaun Watson under center, when you look at the box score for these Browns games this season, I think it's possible that the Browns are at least at 500 if Jameis Winston was the starter from day one, at least in my opinion. But the Bengals, they have not won 
in Cleveland since I want to say 2017 or 2016. I feel like this is the trap game of the week for everyone when you consider that statement. I would not be surprised to see the Browns win this game despite Deshaun Watson's performance throughout this entire season. I am picking the Bengals, but I just have a bad feeling about it. Texans and Packers, and we have a few good matchups this week, and this is one of those good matchups. A matchup that's tough to predict, but... We have two contenders. We've got two great quarterbacks this matchup, C.J. Stroud and Jordan Love. The Texans are currently 5-1 with their one loss being to the undefeated Vikings. The Packers are 4-2, their two losses being to the Eagles in Week 1 in Brazil and to the undefeated Vikings. And this matchup is a very tough one to call as... Both of these teams, they have good defenses, defenses that can absolutely cause chaos. But I am going to go with the Packers in this one. Ever since Jordan Love came back from his injury, he has shown lots of improvement ever since his return. And the Packers' defense, I do feel like they are better at forcing turnovers as they do lead the league in turnover margin at this point in the year. And I do think the crowd in Lambeau is going to be a difference in this game. If this game was in Houston, there is a chance that I would pick the Texans in this game. But I just think that this game being in Lambeau is a big difference in this game. I am picking the Packers. Dolphins and Colts. The Dolphins had their bye week last week. While the Colts, they got a decisive victory over the Titans last week. And Joe Flacco was the starter in that game last week. And will he be the starter again? Or will Anthony Richardson be back as the starting quarterback? I would lean towards Joe Flacco starting again this week. As they did name Anthony Richardson their emergency third string quarterback last week and this is the fourth game of the four games required for a player to sit out when they are on the IR so it is possible we do see Tua return next week for the Dolphins to win this game I do think it's in their best interest to run the football constantly as the Colts they are towards the bottom in run defense in the league. However, despite the Dolphins having their bye week last week, and I do take into account bye weeks and playing on Thursday night the week prior, it's just hard for me to pick a game for the Dolphins to win where Tua isn't the quarterback. Because the Dolphins offense without Tua, it is, it is, it hurts to watch. Like it is, unfortunate to watch and it's no offense to Dolphins fans out there but that's just the truth and that's been what a lot of people have said and I'm going to go with the Colts Lions and Vikings the Vikings had their bye week last week they are one of the last two remaining undefeated teams in the league while the Lions A dominant performance against the Cowboys on the road last week. And there is no doubt in my mind, this game is going to be a classic. This would be the most anticipated game of the week if we didn't have Chiefs and 49ers in the Super Bowl rematch. The Lions' high-octane offense... Dominant running game of David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs going up against Brian Flores's frustrating defense. As we have seen Brian Flores's defensive schemes give quarterbacks 
absolute fits all throughout the season. And nobody has been able to figure out Brian Flores just yet this season. Despite the Vikings having their bye week last week, despite the Vikings being 5-0 and undefeated right now, this Lions team is a legitimate contender to win the Super Bowl. And the Lions, they have handled adversity really well, in my opinion, because a lot of teams, when we see them have a season that nobody predicts them to have, where we see them fly under the radar, the next season they do falter under the pressure because we're expecting them to have another strong season to follow up with the strong season they had the year prior after flying under the radar. And they have lost Aiden Hutchinson for the season, which it's going to be interesting to see what the Lions do. Are they going to make a move the trade deadline? Or are they going to stick with who they have? But Dan Campbell, he has been a true head coach, not only throughout this entire season, but in his entire time with the Lions. And I think the Lions, they pull off the upset and give the Vikings their first loss of the year. Eagles and Giants. The Eagles, they picked up a four-point victory against the Browns last week. And a lot of people, they really gave the Eagles the side eye over it. However, with how unpredictable the NFL has been this season, you will take any win any way you can get it. A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, they did return to the lineup for the Eagles. Dallas Goddard, he did leave the game last week against the Browns. We'll see what his status is for the game. And they go on the road to take on a Giants team where they have been competitive almost every single game this season. And they're competitive once again against the Bengals on Sunday Night Football. I mentioned it last week. The only game the Giants really played this season where it was a complete bad game, was against the Vikings in Week 1. Will we see the Giants play another close and competitive game? I think it's a possibility. And I would not be surprised if the Giants once again played in a close competitive game. However, I just feel like with A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith returning to the lineup, Jalen Hurts, he does get more support as Jalen Hurts hasn't had the best of season so far as he's been really getting a lot of criticism on social media for his performance so far this season. But I think despite the close win against the Browns last week, despite people making fun of the Eagles, making fun of Nick Sirianni for how he acted after the game, I think the Eagles, they have momentum and confidence going into this matchup. And I do think they get the win. Raiders and Rams. The Raiders lost to the Steelers last week to fall to 2-4 and four on the year. While the Rams, they had their bye week last week. I will acknowledge the Raiders did trade Devontae Adams to the Jets. And I will address that later on in the video. The Rams may be 1-4 on the season right now. However, in four of their five games, they have been really competitive. They lost close games. The only bad game they really had this season so far was in Week 2 against the Rams. And with how the Raiders have looked in these last couple of weeks... This pick, it does feel pretty self-explanatory, but it could also be too good to be true at the same time. The Raiders, they are struggling right now, while the Rams, I do think they will take full advantage of being off of the bye week, and I do think they get the win. 
while the Raiders, despite finally trading Devonte Adams, there's still dysfunction within that Raiders organization. Panthers and Commanders. The Panthers, they were competitive against the Falcons for three quarters, but the Falcons, they did pull away in the fourth quarter. While the Commanders, they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Lamar Jackson and the Ravens. The Commanders, they kept it close, but at the end of the day, Derrick Henry was too much for the Commanders, which is not a bad loss for the Commanders. When you think about a juggernaut the Ravens are, despite their 0-2 start, I do feel like they are the second best team in the AFC, only behind the Chiefs. And this pick, I do think, is pretty self-explanatory. As much as the Panthers are a better team with Andy Dalton under center than Bryce Young is, which that is to be expected, I do think Bryce Young, these last few weeks, he has definitely taken advantage of learning under a veteran presence such as Andy Dalton, who has been an NFL journeyman. And I do think he will start again at some point this season. I am not fully out on Bryce Young yet. But I'm going to go with the Commanders to win this game. And I do feel like Jaden Daniels, he has another magnificent game to add to his resume for Rookie of the Year. Up next, Chiefs and 49ers, the Super Bowl rematch. Everyone is looking forward to this game, the most anticipated game of the season. However, it is not going to feature the star players that we were hoping to see in this rematch. Christian McCaffrey is still out. Rasheed Rice, he is out for the season. Hollywood Brown, out for the regular season, but there is hopes that he will return for the playoffs. And I need to mention the spread for this game because... We probably think this is deception from the you-know-whos, right? The 49ers are favored by a point and a half. Are they thinking that we are going to remember the Super Bowl rematch last season with the Eagles and Chiefs, where we saw the Eagles get their revenge on the Chiefs, and it was a start of the Chiefs struggling offensively for weeks until the playoffs began and the Chiefs they looked unstoppable they looked unbeatable at that point the 49ers they did get back in the wind calm against the Seahawks on Thursday night last week and I do favor the teams that played on Thursday night the week prior however the Chiefs had their bye week last week the Chiefs they had an extra week to prepare for this 49ers team and Andy Reid, he is good after a bye week. It is the best cheat code in the league, in my opinion, is Andy Reid after a bye week. And I do think the Chiefs, they do win this game as a one and a half point underdog. And I do think this is the week we finally see Travis Kelsey score his first touchdown of the season. And if I remember correctly... Week 7 of the NFL season is National Tight Ends Day. I had the Chiefs winning the Super Bowl rematch. Jets and Steelers, Sunday night football. The Jets, in the last seven days, they have been trying to do everything they can to provide a spark for the Jets. They parted ways with Robert Sala last Tuesday. And it was a complete blind side of the players as they did not allow Robert Sala to address the team to let them know that he was being let go. He was escorted by team security out of the building. And I will give the Jets a lot of credit. I did not think the Jets were going to be motivated at all in that game against the Bills. 
In fact, I did not think the Jets were going to be motivated at all for the rest of the season. When you consider the fact they were blindsided by Robert Sala being let go, and they had to find out about it on social media. And today, the Jets, they have made the move to trade for Devontae Adams. Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams are reunited. And the Steelers, they are making a very interesting move to give Russell Wilson first-team reps in practice this week. And it's looking like a strong possibility that Russell Wilson will be starting for the Steelers this Sunday night. I have to, unfortunately, I don't like to do this, but I have to make this a to-be-announced prediction. Because why would the Steelers want to start Russell Wilson at this point in the season? Justin Fields has the Steelers at 4-2 and two on the season so far. Why do they make the switch to Russell Wilson? As I do feel like at this point in time, Justin Fields offers more upside for the Steelers than Russell Wilson does. If Justin Fields starts for the Steelers in this game, I do think the Steelers win. But if Russell Wilson starts in this game, I think the Jets win. Which is why this pick right now is to be announced. I do think we do see a low-scoring game in this matchup. I do think both of the defenses will be able to hold their own. And it will come down to which offense can make a play down the stretch in a low-scoring game. And I do think for the Steelers, their best chance of a win in this game, I do think is starting Justin Fields over Russell Wilson. So this prediction is to be announced for right now. I'm undecided. We have two Monday night football games this week. The first of the two, Ravens and Buccaneers. A couple of four and two teams on the season. The Ravens have won four in a row after the 0-2 start. And they go on the road to take on an underrated Buccaneers team, I do feel like. I do feel like the Buccaneers, despite them making it to the divisional round last season, I don't think there are a lot of people that are taking the Buccaneers as seriously as they should. But this game, I do think, it is a little self-explanatory for me, as there is a stat that really sticks out for this matchup, and it is Lamar Jackson against the NFC. Lamar Jackson has only lost one time to an NFC team. And I'm not exactly sure what the record is for Lamar Jackson against the NFC right now. I think it's 22-1 or 23-1 against NFC teams. And this could potentially be a game where we do see Lamar Jackson lose to an NFC team for only the second time. But it is just really hard for me to pick against the Ravens right now as they look like an absolute juggernaut these last four weeks. And I think the Ravens, they do make it five wins in a row. I do, however, think this will be a high-scoring game. I do think this is the type of game where it will simply come down to who has the ball last, and I do think it will be the Ravens. I do think Baker Mayfield and the Buccaneers will be able to hold their own in this game. But I just think Lamar Jackson and the Ravens, they do make a play in the fourth quarter where the Buccaneers can't. The second Monday night football game and the 15th and final game of the week. As the Bears and Cowboys both have their bye week this week. I did forget to acknowledge that earlier. Chargers and Cardinals. The Chargers, they were dominant the first three quarters against the Broncos last week. But then the Chargers, they played a little more relaxed. 
and only won the game 23 to 16. While the Cardinals, their inconsistency continues as they lost to the Packers in convincing fashion. The Packers, a convincing win over the Cardinals. The week prior, they upset the 49ers on the road. And the big question for this game is which Cardinals team is going to show up for this matchup on Monday night. As we've seen the Cardinals pull off upsets in these past couple of seasons under Jonathan Gannon. The Cardinals, in my opinion, they're the most unpredictable team in the NFL right now. Because one week they are pulling off a massive upset that nobody expects. And the next week they are losing in dominant fashion to whoever they're playing. I think in this game, the Chargers win off of a dominant performance from J.K. Dobbins. And the Cardinals' inconsistencies, they continue. Because one week we see the Cardinals, it looks like they're a contender in the NFC West. And then the next week they look like a bottom-tier team in the league. That will do it for my Week 8 NFL predictions. Comment your predictions down below. My Week 6 NFL takeaways on YouTube Shorts, I plan on doing that within the next 24 hours or so. That is all I have this week. Enjoy the games this weekend. And remember, Vegas is always watching.